Mike or like the mayor? Be me. Uh, tonight we're starting off, uh, we have a public hearing on proposed addition to Chapter 57 and amendments to Chapters 40, 64, 111, 134 regarding reimbursement of professional consultants expenses. Would you like to elaborate on anything? Yes, uh, Council has advised us that our current village code is not as precise as it needs to be relative to the establishment of an escrow account and how it can be used. So what has been done is a new chapter is being added to the Village Code, Chapter 57, which outlines the purpose of the chapter as well as how funds will be handled, um, how um, consultants will be compensated, uh, the procedures for an application of funding of the escrow account, uh, procedures for del upon deletion of the escrow account, return of unexpended funds, these are non-interest bearing accounts, and Schedule A, which is probably most important, which is the amount of money that needs to be deposited by applicants for different types of applications. So a subdivision application would be one, fee, one set of fees, boundary line adjustments, special use permits, zoning interpretations, etc. So what you will find in the package is the actual text for Chapter 57 and the specific changes to Chapters 40, which is 40-5, uh, 64, which is 64-13, uh, 111, which is Sections 5, 6, and 26, and Section 134. Uh, sorry, Chapter 134, Section 16, 25, and 28 of the Code. These are all based upon the current code, not <coughs> on what the Code Update Committee is suggesting. So the two are independent of one another. Mm -hmm. For anyone in the audience who would like to make a public comment, now, now is the time. If not forever, hold your peace. <laughs> Is that really cold? That's cold. Though. I thought you were from Boston. I thought you were really cold. I had a cold on the phone. Come and help us. If nothing, should we just move along? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs something. Yeah. Okay. Somebody needs a bath. Oh, you are? Well? No. So well, resolution 21-2019 adopts chapter 57, re regulating reimbursement of professional consultants' expenses. Uh, do you want me to read the resolution itself? Oh, I don't know. I was reading something else. I was, oh. I was, I didn't move on past the chapters yet. Sorry, oh. I just, I was looking at something before we moved ahead. Uh, you said it was the, uh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. The fees? The fees are right at the back of chapter 57. That's our piece in here. It's in that package. It's that page five. Keep going. Keep going. There they are. Keep the public hearing open and, and move along with our agenda. Uh, so next we have resolution 21, 2019, adopting local law 04 of 2019 to add chapter 57, reimbursement of professional consultants' expenses. It's the same thing. What's that? The same thing. What? So it, it's this is the first. Oh, this is those. Okay, so sorry, sorry, sorry. Items. Got it. Yeah, sorry. We're down on. You want to move on to seven. item number seven. Okay. Number seven. <coughs> uh, resolution 26, 2019, suspension of on street parking on Marion Avenue. Um, I believe we do the 
this every year, right? Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so um, I'll make a motion to. Uh, I'll, I'll do it, read it quickly. Whereas the village of Cold Spring has on street parking regulations which limit uh, or prohibit on street parking at certain times and location, whereas the village of Cold Spring conducts snow cleaning on its streets during winter months, and whereas snow cleaning activities in the vicinity of Marion Avenue and Benedict Road. Could be better conducted and coordinated with local residents of villages on street parking regulations are suspended on the end portion of Marion Avenue south of Benedict Road to allow parked vehicles to remain thereon. And now, therefore, be it resolved as follows: the Village Board of the Village of Col Village Board of the Village of Cold Spring hereby suspends on street parking regulations for the dead end portion of Marion Avenue south of Benedict Road from November 15, 2019, till April 15, 2020. And a copy of this resolution, uh, and a copy of this resolution that we posted at Village Hall and provided to the Village Police Department for with. I will make a motion to uh, to adopt this resolution. Second. In discussion. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Oh, roll call. Sorry. Trustee Early. Yes. Trustee Miller. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Bellotto. Yes. Mayor Morandi. Uh, yes. Uh, next is resolution 27 2019 authorizing budget adjustments um, we do this not frequently but sometimes needed um, so uh, a number of them are one is to reallocate funds for mis miscellaneous building repairs to specific repairs in the village this coincides with the original plan during budget adoption when fund balance is allocated for improvement including those at the firehouse um, next is to reallocate funds uh, within recreation to ensure proper classifications of expenses. Um, it's, uh, so it's being moved around from dockside personnel and personal service, recreation personal services. Um, next is uh, purification equipment to equipment repair to reallocate budgeted amounts for the replacement of boiler at water treatment plant. And finally, I think it's finally, yes, uh, is reallocate funds for annual contracts, including alarms, generators, preventive maintenance, and SPEDS. Speedies. What are speedies? Um, Greg would know. Matt would know. So I'll make a motion to uh, approve uh, of these uh, adjustments in Resolution 27, 2019. Second. Roll call. Trustee Early? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee Bellotto? Yes. Mayor Morandi? Yes. On the uh, the one before that, we we didn't have a, a second, did we? Or did yes, we, we did. Yes. We did? Yes. Okay. I thought I was cut off and we went to the roll call before we did that. Yep. Okay. Um, old uh, business discussion on doors, wastewater treatment. I stopped down and talked to, uh, I just happened to be in the area, climbing a hill, looking at something else for the village, and stopped by and talked to Scott and Greg about this. Um, it, it seems like uh, Dutch's door, who is the, you know, Dutch's overhead, the one that they had originally worked with um, on the doors and opening, whatever, it doesn't seem to, I don't know, doesn't seem interested in working with what we have there. Yeah, that's what So um, their suggestion was to uh, find another door company to come down take a look what we have, either go from a roll-up or a overhead, whatever works. We kind of determined it would have to be a roll-up, otherwise it's going to shrink the width of the garage door opening. Okay. Do you uh, want to follow up and call some? Sure. I love that stuff. Yeah, okay. I love overhead doors. Do it. Okay. Find someone to put the siding on while you're at I'm already, yeah, I got that being arranged. I'll okay. talk to you. So let's see if we can get that done. When I hear that tomorrow. All right. They said something, uh, they had one name and I can't remember it now. Place them there. That I'm going right for roll up doors because I know that's what we need. Right. So I'll just go look into that. Okay. Uh, next is a request for resident parking at the municipal lot. I do have a couple things. Marie's been working very hard with a little her data crunching. So we came up with a little bit. Um, there's a uh, two pieces here. There's a couple uh, changes I made. There's a license has to be added to the registration. But. Um, this is kind of what we came up with, and this can be changed to whatever you'd like. But uh, this is our thoughts on it, what, what's needed. 
and where he came up with it, they did all the number crunchings or the date crunchings and found out which dates we could, you know, have municipal parking and which days and we'd lose how much money we'd lose if we did it. My thought was we just have it for 24-7 and not like specific periods. And uh, if they have emails, uh, we can contact them if it's snow removals needed or special events. That can be a pain. What's that? That can be a real pain. What is? Having everybody's emails and contacting them. And well, we can. Who got it and who didn't get it. And so, if, so to address that, an email must be provided with the application. Mm -hmm. The email will be sent out and it's depend, the, it, the onus is on the uh, resident to move their car. We could add a, we could add some to the if it's snow whatever our usual snow removal if you know you have to be out plus that or whatever I think it's pretty clear. So this is now um, for just the winter period. I thought they wanted something for the whole year. Right. They did, yeah. but we're just dealing with the winter right now because Figure that's what I could const That's what my mind could wrap itself around right now. That's what we need right now, anyway. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Sorry, there's one other change. Uh, we are proposing that the normal um, overnight parking at the municipal lot, <coughs> uh, which goes into effect November 15th and goes until April 15th, um, is from 9 p.m. till 8 a.m. We're proposing that it be changed from 9 a.m. to 10, sorry, 9 p.m. to 10 a.m. <coughs> in addition. Right. So the people have time to actually get their car out of there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't add that in there, did I? No. no. So okay. that, that would be a, a code adjustment, right? Is that, is that in the code? It is currently in the code that the free parking ends at 8 a.m. So we will have to change the code to say 10 p.m. 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. And this is a trial. We'll see how it works. So, so we don't have to change the code for a trial for that, right? I, I think not. Because we're just figuring the, it out. For the other one, uh, yes. And we will be changing the code for um, the code update. You don't think that during the holidays um, the parking lot will be used more? I mean, no. I know it's busy now, no? No. I know you've done all the number crunching. But in fact, December 25th, I don't think the car parked there. Yeah. Uh, the only date, um, you normally make a proposal that there'd be free parking over Thanksgiving, so there's no data over Thanksgiving. I can't tell you whether or not it's heavily used mm -hmm. or not heavily used because you, you take true. over the, um, the <coughs> music. Also in number only, six it has, uh, for purposes of snow removal or special events, so we can contact them if something... Yes. If there's a date that seems to always, you know, have a lot of parking, maybe, I don't know, the, December 31st, we no, can... No, the only I'm one... I'm just using yeah, that as an example, if, if it happened, yes. and that was a date that was, that people from data shows that a lot of people use it, we can contact them and say you can't park there that day. The only, the only date in December that has been shown to be heavily used is December 29th last year. Why? I don't know. Mm -mm. Can I ask you a question? Uh, not in a moment. Okay. Just want to finish the discussion and we'll get right to it. Um, I have a question. The, the other thing is how we issue the permits. I think if you do first come first serve, that could be that could be tricky. Um, so the ones in red are. Uh, it's not like I said. This is this is our first draft. Right on here. I mean, if it's first come first serve, that uh, when when is that? You know, people that are at the meeting and then they come and maybe I don't know. If not, there's you a lot need of a lottery. What's that? If there's a lot of people, yeah, maybe a lottery would be more fair because mm -hmm. not everybody can get there at certain times. So know? what we're doing well, while we're doing What nice if we date and time stamp whenever we receive the application? That would be first come, first serve. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But then wouldn't be two. That's what I'm saying. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if that's how fair that is to oh. everyone. Or if somebody well, say we say oh. tonight we pass it then when does everyone well, we find have, out? We put it in the paper, other people find out. We put it in the date. We, we announce a date when the applicant permits are going to be available. That makes sense. Um, so they say as the permits are available November 1st. Yeah. 
pick one up at the office, or you know, print one, put them online so you can print it out. I think they have to. They have, <laughs> to, have to apply in person. Yeah, they have to apply yeah, in person. You can print it out and fill it out so you don't stand here. That's fine. Fill it out. There'll be the big line going around the corner. Yeah. Three mm -hmm. uh, D. So. Either that or lottery. So and then the other, the other thing is people who work during the weekend have weekends off. So if we do it during the weekend. This, this permits it. No, I mean getting the permit. Coming in to get the They can drop it off in the Okay. Mm -hmm. They can print it and drop it off in the, in the slot. Right. So then I think it should be lottery. Yes, mm -hmm. lottery. It's embarrassed. Because mm -hmm. there's going to be more than 19 <laughs> people. <laughs> You know, we may be surprised, maybe there won't be. Mm -hmm. uh, how many spots does that leave open for? Uh, there's 38 spots. 38? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there's plenty of parking for overnighters that are paying as well. Actually, no. Doing this will will cut into the revenue. I've, I've gone through every single day. I didn't see that in your email. But mm -hmm. I just knew that one day that uh, in your most recent email. Well, for overnight though, there should that should be fine. That's what I mean for overnight. Overnight, overnight yeah. is fine. Yeah. If you can find a space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if someone's in there, they're not. <laughs> that's too bad. Mm -hmm. That this, makes sense. This is also that's the case second. for people who get a permit. There's no guarantee that there will Over be a space spot. available to them. Right. Good. Okay. Uh, that's what I was. That's what I was thinking, but I couldn't quite get to it. And I talked to Larry, he thought the, uh, the sticker should go in the, uh, that rear window and we have to pull into the spot. That way, head first. enforcement's going through there, they can see the sticker, they don't have to trudge around the car and, uh, mm -hmm. and then try to find it. Is it back. a window or a bumper? Yeah, in the window. <coughs> that was his, his recommendation. And it was five months, so it, we thought uh, $10 a month would be fair, so that's $50 per permit. Mm -hmm. And that also helps uh, recoup some of the money we lose. Because right. we lose 800 or or $1,000, somewhere in there. Yep. Anything else? Yes, sir. That's great. Uh, about the parking. Uh, I live in Springbrook, so they set me up here tonight. Uh, rather than the permit, would it just be possible to have uh, the parking, say, from 6 to 7 at night to 9 or 10 in the morning, just to get the people off the street at nighttime? Well, currently, the parking lot is available for free overnight parking from 9 p.m. until 8 a.m. And we're changing that from 9 p.m. to 10 a.m. Okay. And that's been, since the parking lot was established, that's been um, the ground rules from November 15th to April 15th. Free overnight parking. Okay. And so we extended that also with this to 10 o'clock, so we have more time to okay. get it out in the morning. Thank you. And then the, uh, the reason why we were doing this is some people wanted to park there, they, you know, said no one's parking over there. We see an empty lot, and so we did all the research on that. It shows that. There are a lot of empty spaces, so... We'll Except on weekends, it's just that forget the weekend. Right. During the week, it's... Yeah. Uh, During the winter, it's yeah. a lot. Of, yeah, forget about it. Yeah, this goes until April and the summer. We'll probably adjust mm -hmm. for the fact that on weekends, we need it for tourists, we need it for visitors. So, where would you like to go with this? I can, we can tidy this up, add license, uh, turn it to lottery, and yeah. come up with a date and stuff? Uh, yeah. Um, present it. Uh, actually, I think the, the next step would be to put a notice in the paper. <coughs> and we're too late for this week, so it would be for next week. Mm -hmm. and, and it would be ideal if we could start it on November 15th. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will, if everyone, uh, this is this is a colored version with permit number. We could have plate number or permit number or whatever. And that's, we, that's the actual size. That's so right. you think we should have something smaller? No. I don't know. Is it going to be made by some company that's yeah. sticky on it? Yeah. Okay. They're like 20 bucks for 25 and you can get them in three days. 
off. Mm-hmm. And then we can <coughs> we can probably create this so that we, I can put a link on uh, Facebook okay. to the application. <coughs> <coughs> All right, and if there's anything you see and review it, let me know. And, uh, yeah, I, want, I, want, I want an apartment number on address. What's that? I want an apartment number on address. Oh, okay. We probably should put, I guess, the plate number on the sticky so that it will go down. The plate number is on the application. Okay. <laughs> and this is for. Um, is for office use. Just put the apartment number there. Yep, yep, yep. And then we want to for office use. Yeah, yeah, I kind of well. ran out of space and my computer oh. wouldn't work with me. <laughs> so I'm okay. just doing just some on, last minute. On the um, application, it says cost of $50 per term. It should say cash or check because we don't take a credit card. So just to. Say cash or check, which is fifty dollars per permit because we don't take credit cards. So, what else do you want? I'll, I'll leave it. Okay. If I can find room for it, it doesn't yeah, move okay. everything off of one yep. page. <laughs> okay, so we will uh, move ahead with that. I'll, I'll I'll tidy that up and send it to you, mm-hmm. and uh, think about the lottery and how we're going to work that and uh, what we're going to put on in an ad. Room. Add for next week. Okay, uh, next is a discussion on cyber insurance. Fran, I know you yeah. have more info. I did. I spoke to Anthony um, and he actually called me back. We had discussed this earlier and Anthony had told me that the backup that the village has is a carbon cloud backup and it's a 24 7 backup. Um, <laughs> So we don't have any Jeff didn't put it in the packages this last week. Um, but at that time when I spoke to him, I sent him an email, he said he thought that he had something that would probably be better and would offset some of the cost of the insurance. So I called him and we had a discussion on the phone. So basically his alternative is get the memo. No. He says um, what we have now is a file that he's got. Uh, the alternative that he was recommending would be a file plus image backup system, but the file plus image backup would cost uh, $2,640 a year. So when he asked me what we were being offered by the insurance company, and I told him that we could get a million dollars of insurance um, million per occurrence uh, or aggregate uh, for $836, he thought that was a phenomenal good price. So he recommended we stay with the backup that we have, which is the file based, and then add the insurance on top of that. Uh, and he thought that was a very good deal. So that's uh, where we're at at this point. So do you want to make a uh, I will make a motion. motion. Now we have alternatives to insurance. We can get a 500,000 per occurrence, 500,000 aggregate for 500, <coughs> roughly $581, or 250,000 for 484. But the best would be a million for eight hundred and thirty six and Michelle said there was seven hundred dollars in the budget already that we could use for this and she could probably find the extra hundred and thirty six dollars. So uh, I'd like to make a motion that we go with the million dollar coverage for the with our insurance company with Spain for cyber liability insurance. I'll second that. For the amount of for the amount I'm sorry, a million dollars for the amount of eight hundred and thirty six dollars a year. I re second. I re-second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next is update on firehouse floor and boiler. Um, I do not have dates yet for the boiler. I, uh, I emailed and called Jason over the weekend. I talked to him yesterday and he said he would get back to me and uh, he hasn't. On, uh, he had to contact the contractors to let us know when things were going to start. Tentatively, it's the 25th to start setting up um, for sidewalks and, and on Garden Street, curb right? repair. Yeah, Garden Street. Did I miss something? You said firehouse floor. Firehouse floor. Oh, firehouse floor. Oh, here we go. I'm out of it tonight. So, okay, sorry. Rewind. Well, I'll just stay on that for now. That's uh, Garden Street. I'm still waiting on that. So it's not on here. I don't know why Jeff didn't put it in there knowing that I was going to be thinking about that. 
the other is the update on the firehouse floor and boiler. Um, the boiler, we had gotten three prices. We didn't anticipate it being as high as it was. Um, the highest number just roughly was 39,000, then 34,000, and then 31,000 about. Um, we were anticipating much less. According to our proceed, uh, policy and uh, for, uh, for taking bids, anything uh, under 35 and over, I think, 20, we need to actually advertise for it. So we have to put the bids on hold. And we we're advertising uh, in this specified site that's uh, in our policy. You okay? Pause for a minute. And uh, so we, uh, we have to wait on that. Um, so uh, probably another week, or we're not going to be meeting for another three weeks, is that right? <coughs> Unless we call a meeting. meeting next week. <coughs> the twelfth of November will be our next meeting. <coughs> it's close to the twelfth of November. Okay, so what's that? That's close to the twelfth of November. <laughs> that's right. Johnny Mathis somewhere. Uh -huh. Good old Johnny. So we're going to wait on that. Yep. The uh, floor, um, I don't know, did Jeff put that in the packet? I have yes. One. Okay. The floor, if you want to move ahead with that, the um, it's it's a, definitely a specific uh, contracting uh, company that does this, or a, special, a specialty, I should say. Um, they are backed up till December, um, so if we would like to do this, um, we should uh, move ahead with it. I would like to move ahead with it. I did talk to the uh, engineers and ask if uh, anything was in the floor or if this happened before or after, how that would affect that. And he, he said that it wouldn't. So, and we probably have the boiler and hopefully before then. So, it doesn't matter if they do it in the case of the I'm sure they won't do it if they can't do it. So, I'd like to make a motion on the. Uh, to uh, move ahead with the uh, floor, um, injecting the foam in the floor for the floor support um, for a total of $20,640 for the firehouse. I'll second it. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Would it be possible with the boiler that um, the cellular endpoint could be installed at the same time? What's that? When the boiler is installed, can we also install a cellular endpoint? Right now, we don't monitor the water usage. Oh, I, yeah, I guess so. No, 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 should that be good. Can um, we need to um, notify Matt, maybe? Because I'll have to have the company come to do that. Okay. <coughs> Dave? Yes. Going back to the boiler discussion, what yes. is it you decided to do? We're going to go with one, or you're still yes. soliciting on, on new the boiler? On the boiler. On oh, the boiler, the uh, the uh, the prices that came in were higher than our policy allows us to just get you know written bids. So we have written bids. What we have to do is we didn't advertise, and the procedures in our policy say we have to advertise. So okay. I believe on this one website, at least in a public notice. So uh, Jeff was going to put the, put, uh, put the specs on the site and, uh, and see if there's any replies. Um, if, if there are, we'll add them to the ones we have. Uh, if not, um, then we'll go with uh, one of the bids we have. Thank you. Can you reach out to Matt on the summer Let me reach out to Okay, if you'd like. Sure. Sure. There was a letter from Jennifer College and her mother. It's a letter from uh, Tish and Dennis Barkovich. 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 I uh, recently had a wedding at uh, Dockside. Um, 
it's good, we'll read this, or if not, I'll just end it now. <laughs> I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you and the Board of Trustees for allowing us to hold our daughter's wedding at Dockside on October 12th. It was a wonderful event and could not have turned out better at any other venue in Hudson Valley. We had guests from Denmark, Chile, uh, Colorado, Florida, and Long Island, and everyone continually commented on the spectacular setting the park had to offer. We're extremely lucky that the weather cooperated cooperated and we had a perfect day. It was, it was extremely helpful that Mayor Morandi blocked off the rear of the park for us and we had printed private uh, event posters, but I must say all the park guests were respectful and cooperative on the day of the event. My daughter Jana uh, is going to forward photos of the tent and event and the vendor list of the local businesses we used and really made the event work so well. Again, thank you for your consideration. We are very grateful to the village for providing us with, an, with the venue and for this uh, most memorable day. Nice. Can you use that in our next brochure? Sure, we can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if your trail doesn't take it uh, Next, we have a late entry, the uh, presentation by uh, seventh grade uh, students. Uh, uh, let's see, I just have C down here. Oh, it's Christian? Yeah. And uh, Ethan. Yeah. Hi. You can step up if you want to uh, tell us your project and what you'd like to do. And welcome. Thanks for coming down. Thank Thanks for your us. interest in uh, doing this. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so we would like to put a bike rack down by the tunnel. Um, and you can hand it up. Thank you. So. Um, the yellow highlighter okay. is the tunnel, and mm -hmm. the red is where we want to put it, yep. facing okay. the Got you. tracks. So it'll be right on the side of the, yeah. the, the building itself. Um, good. That's a great spot. And you guys who are doing this for, you want to explain your project or why, you're, why, why you came up with this? Um, well, we want to up to support biking and culturing and since there are not very many um, bike racks on Main Street we want to, we want to put one. And are you working, is this part of a, a DCI project, project? Which is? Discover, Create and Innovate for uh, Mr. Horn. Okay. And what do you do in that class or how does, how does it work? Um, we come up with projects that we think would help the town or the school uh -huh. and we um, we spend all the classes trying to get that done. So what kind of research or how are you uh, purchasing the rack or how does that come about? Well, we had okay, a couple ideas. One was we would buy the ingredients um, because the, yeah. Um, the so you buy the materials? I buy the materials from mm -hmm. Home Depot and a website called Forbit. Mm -hmm. With help from the from Dr. Silky said that uh, the school would be able to cover the cost. Okay, fantastic. So, do you guys have a design, or did you come up with one, or do you have plans from somewhere that shows how to do? We have a, a book draft of it, and we we're gonna me, Christian, and Mr. Horn were gonna make it okay. when the parts came in. Okay. And we were basing it off of the one that's on the playground uh, next to the school. Okay. We're, we're going to make it half the size. It's a big um, one, but half the size should still hold things. Um, uh, it's over 10 bikes. Uh, the one that you're going to do here? Yeah. Uh, okay. As, now, is the one that you're copying, is that also made from PVC or is that metal? No, uh, I don't think it's made out of metal and this was our other idea that we're going to try to fundraise for more money because metal would cost, um, more, cost a lot more. So yeah. for that idea, we're going to do a fundraiser and we know a, a, a metal worker who could make it for us or we could try to buy it, buy just one. Yeah. Do you have any idea money what that we would get from the fundraiser? Do you have any idea what a metal one costs? A uh, pre-built one um, we saw was around sixty dollars. No, one hundred sixty dollars. One hundred sixty dollars. Yeah, one hundred sixty dollars. But that was um, we're seeing. We're hoping if we get more, we could buy it. That one held like 
seven to eight, um, seven or eight bikes. You're hoping if we got more money, we could buy a bigger one. Mm -hmm. So are you going to move ahead with the PVC one, or are you going to try to get the metal? Um, we would probably have to talk to Mr. Horn about okay. if he would be able to build it, if we were going to buy materials to build one. And if he wouldn't, then we would probably look into a pre-built one. Yeah. Also, we're thinking about cosmetics. Probably a metal one would look better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There. So. I would just worry too that you could a metal one you could fasten more securely. Yeah, and a PVC pipe would be easier to move. Yeah. How are you gonna fasten it to where you're putting it? Um. We're thinking now that if we're gonna do PVC, we want um to somehow like. Maybe you can bolt it to the ground. Mm -hmm. But if it's metal, it should be heavy enough that we, it wouldn't move. We could build a stand on both sides. Oh, yeah, it would be a stand on both sides that would keep it up. Which is similar to the one at Halvin. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I think if you, I think you, I, I would rather see metal, and I think that the, the village could kick them up with some money to support that. Right. Yeah, I was so, thinking we needed one. What's funny that? Think, I was thinking we needed a yeah. bike rack down there. So why don't you do a little more research and tell us what it costs, and maybe if you have 63 already and we put in more money, we can uh, you know get a metal one. Or maybe you guys can get metal. I know there's pipe fittings and stuff. You might be able to come up with something and make it yourself. Yeah. 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 No problem with making a metal one. That would be more difficult. I mean, I have to weld that. Well, you might not have to weld that they have they joints where you can uh, screw, screw them in. Um, cut things yeah. and bell shapes and screw it yeah. in. I don't know. You could look into that. I don't know if you could do that with a uh, round. Uh, you might not be able to. Anyway, uh, either way, uh, I think it's a great project, and we'll be glad to back you on this. So if you could come up with what the amount is and uh, come back to us and uh, show us what we're getting, and uh, you could do it. You have to have this done in a certain amount of time. I think we have three weeks, but. Um, <laughs> yeah. Does that mean you have to complete it, or can you have it in motion? I think we could probably do it like. We. We should have most of it done in three weeks. After three weeks, I think we would, um, we would be able to do the final steps. Yeah. That's just when the class ends for the quarter, but the two of us could continue the project yeah. outside of the class. Mm -hmm. Also, do you have these guys at any other time here? Yeah. Right. Or we could, uh, we could, we could uh, just give a hundred dollar contribution there. Oh, yeah. yep. 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 And then that might cover them. Mm -hmm. I think it is $160. Um, we actually found one. Yeah. There's, I think it was all eight spikes. Okay. What we can do is, uh, if, uh, we'll, we'll, um, if everyone's good, we'll, I'll make a motion to uh, allocate $100 to this project, these young men. Um, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And let me know if it's more money than that, and uh, we'll see what we can do. If you don't have someone else that will contribute, or I'll, I'll personally give you a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. 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 <laughs> a fun night, isn't it? Yeah. Thanks for the visit. Uh, next approval of bills. I move to approve batch number 5317 for a total amount of $19,777.91. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, last we have uh, approval of minutes uh, where is the, uh, for uh, October 1st. And, okay, let's start with that. First approval of minutes October 1st. I make a motion to approve. Second. Go ahead, Fran. Okay, I got the second. Fran, a second. <coughs> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And second approval of minutes, uh, October 8th. I make a motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? No. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you again. Uh, Thank you for uh, working on these. I know there's been a lot of back and forth and changing, so thank you for your patience, Michael, and working on this, and thank you, trustees, which brings us uh, back to the top. Uh, do we have the 
We never have put an end time for these public hearings, do we? What's that? Usually have fun. We should really put an end time next mm -hmm. time. <laughs> we know how it's going to run. It's just mm -hmm. like put one there, it's open. We're going to do the whole do our agenda and then close at the at the end of the meeting or whatever, which I think is would be fine, unless like on a subject like this anyway. Anyway, so uh, so I'll make a motion uh, to. Is there any more comments on the uh, public hearing? Mm -hmm. I have a question. I inquired another subject. The, uh, the um, dealership that was a dealership on Fair Street, uh, I think it's falling in day it by is. day. <laughs> and uh, if someone's going to get very hurt or something's going to happen there. We keep, uh, keep hearing that it's sold. And I don't know what that is, and I think that our, uh, you know, I think they boarded up the front. They uh, did. And uh, so our code enforcement's been, uh, officer's been uh, notified, he's known about it for a while. I heard it sold, and I'm not, I can't, I can't verify that, but uh, we're aware of that and something, I agree with you, I mean, we've talked about it, I'm not sure. It has to be, I think the next step, it has to be condemned or, or I don't know what the next step is. And one other thing, the uh, traffic on Fair Street, you know, especially on weekends, when we have everybody going to the uh, mountains there, that's very dangerous when the uh, traffic coming both ways and these people are not getting out of the way and little kids and their animals. Um, I don't know what can be done. If this could be a pattern change in the traffic there, I don't know, but it's very dangerous. I, I would agree with that also. Um, it's something that I don't know how, how we deal with. It's, uh, we have sidewalks that people pedestrians walk out of the road, and then once you get to the past the river view, there are no signs on no. the sidewalk. Uh, and then that turns into a uh, county road. I'm not sure exactly where. I guess it's down a bit farther from there. Especially dangerous is after you get by the ball field, and that's county, county road. At one time when the Fjord Trail, I think there was actually plans for moving the fence in more and the sidewalk going through there and then I think the bids came back and Phillipstown was going to deal with that or the town of Phillipstown and uh, prices came out really high so they ended up not putting sidewalks in and, and nothing further to happen there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, you want to read through them, yes. Marie, since you've worked so hard on this. The first is Resolution 21-2019, Adopting Local Law 04 of 2019, and Chapter 57, Regulating Reimbursement of Professional Consultants' Expenses. Can we go through the... No, you can just... Okay. I think we should have... So, I make a motion to um, approve the resolution. I'll second. All in favor? So, oh, no, no, no. Sorry. No. Roll call. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee Early? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Velotto? Yes. Mayor Morandi? Aye. <clears throat> Next resolution 22, 2019. Ad adopting local law 05 of 2019, amending chapter 40, regulating building construction. I make a motion to um, approve resolution 22-2019. I'll second that. Roll Trustee roll. Miller? Yes. Trustee Early? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trust Trustee Velotto? Yes. Mayor Morandi? Aye. Next resolution 23-2019. This resolution adopts local law 6 of 2019 amending chapter 64 Regulating the Historic District. I make a motion to approve this resolution. I'll second. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee Early? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Villalba? Yes. Mayor Morandi? Aye. Uh, next resolution 24, 2019. This adopts the local law, 2000, uh, local law 7 of 2019, which amends 
Chapter 111, Regulating Subdivision of Land. I make a motion to approve this resolution. I'll second. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee Early? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Bellotto? Yes. Mayor Morandi? Aye. And the last one is resolution 25-2019, adopting local law 08 of 2019, amending chapter 134, regulating zoning. I make a motion to approve this resolution. I'll second. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee Early? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Bellotto? Yes. Mayor Morandi? Aye. And that completes the set of resolutions. Now, my bad for not looking at these closely. I thought we were just doing escrow. Uh, yes, each, of, so, each one is that. Uh, so the reason why so many chapters are involved. Chapter 57 establishes mm -hmm. the escrow uh, rules and regulations, which are invoked whenever there's a land use application. Mm -hmm. Currently, chapters 40, 64, 111, and 134 mm -hmm. mention escrow. Oh, okay. So each of those chapters is being modified. Thank you. Okay. Anything from the audience? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Is that quick enough, Steve? Go Astros. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>